Good afternoon. Um, we're going to have today a quick conversation with the Minister of Education and her Deputy Minister, um, Nicole Morgan, on some recent updates with the Yukon school system. So I'll let uh, the Minister McPhee begin this conference. We'll go from her statements to uh, Q&A with media on the phone. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Dante. I would uh, like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Kualandan First Nation and the Ta'an Kwachan Council. Before I speak about education today, I'd like to start by reiterating some information that was shared yesterday, and then I'll continue with today's announcement. Yesterday, my colleague, Minister Stryker, asked Yukoners to take precautionary measures to avoid popular recreation sites this weekend in the Yukon Territory. He and the Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Hanley, also strongly suggested that Yukoners stay home, stay close to home, and choose less risky activities. It's really important to repeat these statements. The Chief Medical Officer of Health and the Civil Emergency Measures Orders now prohibit congregations of more than 10 people. That means if you are the 11th person to arrive at a location, you and all of the other people there are now breaking the law and subject to fines. I do not make these statements lightly. We all value our ability to recreate in our amazing natural surroundings and take great comfort in getting outdoors, especially as the weather turns warmer and our sunlight increases. But I must repeat, we are asking Yukoners to be vigilant, to protect themselves and others. Use caution respect the need to physical distance from others, even in the outdoors. We're also asking Yukoners to understand that now is not the time to visit a rural community. Driving to many popular recreation spots often means extra people stopping in rural communities for snacks or for gas, or if they need to for an emergency. This puts our communities at risk and we are recommending against any non-essential travel to rural communities. These recommendations and, requ and our requests at this time to protect our communities. But please know, if we see a need to put more restrictive orders in place, we have the authority and we will do so. We truly understand and appreciate the sacrifices that everyone is making right now. And we thank you all for taking these strong measures. We know that if we take strong precautions now, we will keep you Connor safe. We will save lives and we will make it possible to return to normal as quickly as possible. The health and safety of our students, our school staff, our families, and our communities is our government's first priority. In consultation and on the recommendation of the Yukon's Chief Medical Officer of Health, we are issuing an order to suspend face-to-face -face classes at all Yukon K-12 public schools starting April 16th for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year. While face-to-face -face classes are suspended, I want to assure students, parents, and families that learning will continue. And I'll speak more about how that will happen in a few moments and we'll take your questions. 
this is not an easy decision. We have made this decision in the best interests of the health and safety of students, families, and communities. This is, an, this is an unprecedented time, and we are taking these precautions to limit the spread of COVID-19, including in the close quarters of Yukon schools. I understand and recognize that many students, parents, and families will be disappointed and worried about this situation. I'll speak for a moment directly to students. For this school year, you will not have the opportunity to attend school in the way that you normally would. That is disappointing, but I want to assure you that we have been working hard to plan in case we had to make this decision. Your schoolwork is gonna look different as we ask you to change how you learn, how you connect with your friends, and how you achieve your goals. We know that you are adaptable and up to the challenge. We ask you to be open-minded to new ways of connecting with your teachers and participating in your favorite classes and those not so favorite classes as well. Just because face-to-face -face learning won't happen for the rest of this school year does not mean your learning will stop. We will help you to work in new ways and move forward to achieve your goals and your future success. Parents and families, please know that we do not expect you to turn your kitchen and living rooms into schools or become teachers. Our Yukon educators are skilled and dedicated to getting your students the learning they need at this unprecedented time. Traditional homeschooling, as some families choose, is not the plan. We are asking that families support their students as they continue to learn in a different way. Administrators, teachers, educational assistants, at every school in the territory have been working hard to develop alternative learning opportunities for the remainder of the school year, which will begin on April the 16th. Our committee of Yukon educators and school administration staff have worked with the British Columbia Ministry of Education to develop learning continuity requirements for all Yukon schools, to provide common standards for students learning for this school year. Educators and school staff will use these requirements to do several things. They will use them to determine the essential learning for students for the remainder of the year. They will use them to develop learning plans for their individual schools and to communicate with students, parents, and families. Each school will use these requirements to prioritize and plan for learning to continue in a way that works for their school community. This could include using online tools or more traditional learning resources. Each school is considering a variety of ways to provide learning opportunities, including for families who may not have access to technology. Each school is also looking at ways to continue supporting students who have diverse or exceptional learning needs to ensure these students and families continue to have access to the supports that they need. How these plans may look will be different for each Yukon school. Many students, parents, and families have already started to hear from their principals or teachers about what their school's new learning plans will look like. 
If not, they will be connecting with students and families before April 15th. Our Yukon educators will ensure that students complete the essential learning requirements and can move on to the next grade level or graduate. Every student will receive a final report card and students on track to graduate will still graduate. Our schools will continue to provide supports for students, parents, and families, so learning can continue during the remainder of the school year. Changing our lives and routines has been and will continue to be challenging. No one expected the extent and the impact of this pandemic on our lives, even a few short weeks ago. I know that what we are asking of students, parents, and families is not an easy adjustment and will come with its own challenges. Please know that during this unusual and trying time, the Department of Education, our staff, and educators are dedicated to our students and working every day to ensure that what is in the best interests of UConn students guides every decision. Thank you, Shanithan, merci. All right, we'll take um, questions from the phone, starting with uh, Gabrielle from the Whitehorse Star. Do you have a question and a follow-up? Yeah, my question is, how should parents and students prepare to start for learning on April 16th? Joining the meetings. They need to download for technology. Sorry, can you go again, Gabrielle? Just a caller came on the line. Yeah, is there any way that students and families should be preparing to start school on April 16th? Will they need materials or, or have to download technologies or anything of that nature? Thanks for the uh, question, Gabrielle. The question, if in case people didn't hear it, is how should families and students prepare for uh, learning after April 16th? Um, it's, it is our expectation and the plan in place will be that every family, every student will be contacted by uh, at least one and maybe more teachers, depending on the grade they're in. Uh, and have communicated to them what the expectations will be going forward for that uh, particular grades work or that particular coursework. So uh, it will be, uh, luckily for us, our curriculum is based on individual learning and teachers' interaction with students about meeting them uh, where they are and in their learning and adjusting to that uh, guidance and uh, parents and students are used to that, uh, having been uh, in place for some time now. Uh, so that won't uh, be a significant change, but we will, uh, every student and family will be connected uh, with their teachers and their, uh, their learning uh, educators uh, for the purposes of determining what that student will need to do. Um, I'll turn it over to Nicole as well, but that's an important piece for families to understand. Hmm. Thank you, Minister McPhee. Uh, one thing I would add for parents is that we at the Department of Education have spent some time putting resources together for parents. And uh, this is a good time to let you know that at yukon.ca, COVID-19 support for Yukoners. If you follow that link, you will find uh, a number of resources and uh, materials that can help pre parents prepare during this time while teachers are continuing to adapt and develop lessons for students. Do you have a follow-up, Gabrielle? Yes, I'm also wondering, because this is a challenging time for everyone, including for students, and maybe not an easy time to conduct learning or really stay focused. And I'm wondering, number one, is there gonna be some flexibility and deadlines, some understanding that this is a challenging time and also, is there any provision of counseling services as there would be if students were in school? Good question. 
Thank you, Gabriella. That's a great question about supports for students while they're in school, counseling supports. Uh, there are resources um, in place to do that. Uh, again, um, on, the, on our website, yukon.ca, COVID-19 support for Yukoners, there are some specific links for supporting uh, students during this time. In particular, we know um, there is a great deal of stress, uh, certainly uh, amongst across the community, but within families as well. And so we have some tips for helping maintain mental well-being, tips that parents can, uh, can do with their children at home, things like keeping a schedule at home, taking your ch talking to your child about COVID-19, asking questions about what they know, and being honest and providing truthful, age-appropriate information to children. Teach them about the importance of proper hygiene, including hand washing, not touching the face, eyes, mouth, physical distancing, and staying home to keep their friends, families, and communities safe. Validating their emotions, reassuring them that what they are feeling is normal and help them to refocus on other activities. These are just a few of, of the things that we can do together to help support uh, our, our youth. We also have supports from our Student Support Services Unit that we will continue to provide uh, as much as possible in an adapted way that can be done remotely. All right, we'll go to John with CKRW. Hi. Um, how exactly does this, uh, this arrangement work for students that require IEPs and EAs or students with uh, disabilities? What kind of accommodations have we put in place for those students? Yes. That's a very good question um, because we are talking about the students who need us most and we certainly recognize that some students have different learning needs and these are addressed in a typical school setting through individual support plans and student learning plans. Our educators will continue to offer these adaptations to students to the greatest extent possible. And in some cases where we may not be able to replicate all of the services provided, we will work closely with families and guardians to look at other ways that we can meet students' needs. We have educational assistants in our schools and they will continue in their role to support teachers and students to adapt and deliver instruction to meet students' diverse needs. And we will continue to work as much as possible to provide specialist services like speech and language and uh, behavioral therapy through distance methods. Do you have a follow-up, John? No, I do not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Gord with the Yukon News. Hi. Um, we've had a number of people reach out to us sort of asking what's going to happen for students who don't have access to reliable internet or internet at all. Um, you mentioned that there will be some supports put in place and, and some accommodations made, but can you speak to that in a little more detail perhaps? Yes, so this time that uh, teachers and educators uh, in the schools have to adapt and prepare is really a time to make connections with families and have conversations about what types of communication will work for each individual family's family. Taking into account some families are working from home, some families are, uh, are part of our critical and essential services and are not at home. And so these are the conversations that have been happening and will continue to happen until April 15th. And in that conversation, we are talking about not only online opportunities, but phones, using the phone, email, 
and also paper-based uh, materials, packages that can be prepared. I think we can all appreciate that Whitehorse is a very different context than Old Crow or our, some of our other rural communities. And we have provided that flexibility for schools and teachers to design their learning opportunities so that they fit the needs of the unique family and community context. I can just, I can just add to that. My mic on? I can just add to that for a bit, Gord. Um, it's really about the individual uh, approach that's going to be taken to every student's needs and every student's uh, learning needs. Uh, we will uh, work with every family, as I've said. Uh, teachers are, uh, are experts in, uh, in education and, uh, and the ways in which uh, students need to achieve their goals. And uh, we can assure you that a, a lack of technology or a lack of reliable technology won't uh, be permitted to impair any student's progress. Do you have a follow-up, Gord? Okay, we'll go to Claudiane with Radio Canada. Yes, um, well, one question I guess uh, would be what kind of support, we're assuming that this is very last minute for the teachers to have to kind of replan the way they give courses online and so on, having probably in a lot of cases some more contact over the phone with some students as you indicated in terms of uh, supporting psychologically certain students. So how, what kind of support is given to the teachers to be able to uh, um, face this situation? I'm just going to comment that quickly first and then uh, to remind us all what's been happening and then um, Nicole can answer as well. Um, the um, Remembering that uh, March break was over at the end of March and initially uh, classes, face-to-face -face classes were suspended for a period of two weeks. That's up until April 15th. During that period of time, teachers have been working since the end of March break till uh, March, uh, sorry, to April 15th, which is about a two week period, have been working on plans going forward as to how they were going to interconnect uh, with their uh, students and support their students and families. Uh, that work is continuing Sometimes uh, teachers are in the school doing that work. Sometimes they're at home, depending on this individual circumstances. And as a result, um, that work has been ongoing. Uh, it was important for uh, this decision to be made in consultation with the Chief Medical Officer of Health uh, to provide not only certainty going forward uh, for teachers to begin and continue the work they've already been doing for the past uh, week or so, um, almost week and a half, uh, and, uh, and to proceed with that, but to give the indication to families and students uh, and to teachers, of course, about how long uh, we think we're facing this particular situation situation and to give some um, some guidance and some certainty to that process going forward. Uh, yeah, I think a couple of things that, that I would just add to that is um, that teachers are, by nature of the work, quite adaptable at this time of the year. One of the natural things teachers do is check in on where students are at and make those plans to ensure that they are successful through to the end of their school year. So in that way, this work that teachers are doing is, is work that teachers typically do. They plan, they develop lessons, and they assess. What they are truly adapting to is a different type of instruction that is done more remotely. And to support them, a key thing that they've had is this time that they will continue to have until April 15th to prepare and adapt. We know not all jurisdictions in Canada have been able to provide that same time for teachers. We are also connecting teachers and asking them to share with one another their ideas and ways that they are adapting so that they are building a community of support around one another as well. Do you have a follow-up, Claudiane? Yeah, another question I've heard from some uh, parents wondering is there's been discussions uh, 
between the different jurisdictions, provinces, about how uh, kids uh, going into university, applying for university, will be able to uh, carry on with, uh, or how how will that work? Has have there been any sort of national discussions about that? Or? Okay. I'll start just uh, initially, and then uh, Deputy Minister can add whatever she would like. We are uh, meeting with uh, the. Um, Canadian ministers of education uh, on at least a weekly basis, sometimes more often than that, uh, for uh, check-ins. Uh, we are discussing interjurisdictionally how a number of these problems will be solved going forward. Uh, certainly, um, post-secondary education and how that will adjust uh, as uh, as we move through this situation uh, is a an important and primary topic in those conversations. And so, uh, yes, we have been connecting with. Uh, uh, other jurisdictions in that way, as well as uh, at the um, department level, uh, discussing these topics uh, as we go forward. Uh, they will, of course, uh, change over the coming months as to how uh, what solutions will be arrived at. Uh, but uh, universities, uh, colleges, other post-secondary organizations across the country are certainly aware that uh, that we have a new normal here, and in particular with respect to uh, youngsters and uh, young people coming out of uh, of high school levels and wanting to pursue post secondary in the next number of months. Uh, adjustments, uh, challenges, solutions will have to be found going forward for uh, because everyone in Canada, of course, and for the most part uh, in the world, are, are currently having an interruption of their face to face learning. Mm -hmm. I think that just very briefly, the only thing I would add is in those conversations that Minister McPhee referenced, uh, the ministers of education uh, across Canada that attend those meetings are both from the post-secondary advanced education uh, side of things as well as public education. And so we are all at the same table and uh, dedicated to ensuring uh, students, in particular those graduating this year, uh, transition smoothly. I'll go to Chris from CBC. Yeah, um, I guess I'm curious to ask, uh, what, do, what exactly is expected of parents um, under this situation in terms of their involvement um, with, with their children's education? Uh, thanks. Uh Chris, for the question, the question was, uh, what's expected of parents in this situation? Uh, we're asking uh, parents in a very general way to support the new situation that their students are in. Uh, we're not asking for uh, houses to be turned into home schools. We're not asking for parents to become educators. Uh, we're clearly asking for them to support their students in this challenging time. Uh, we also are hopeful that uh, parents will take advantage of this time to uh, to do all kinds of things with their with their children because they're unexpectedly perhaps at home. Uh, we need to recognize that not all uh, learning is classroom learning and not all learning is uh, is uh, given out by teachers. In fact, uh, there are um, numerous things that can be done in the family context or in a, a situation where students will be able to uh, learn new skills, uh, spend time with family, read perhaps more than they've uh, done or had time to do in the past, uh, participate in some outdoor activities and some learning in that way, uh, traditional pursuits, uh, a number of things. Uh, we've encouraged uh, families to, uh, to work with their children to perhaps keep a journal of this particular time so that they can be kept for them when they become adults and uh, I hope we we all hope that we get there and be able to look back and see what this time has meant, uh, but particularly through the eyes of our children uh, and uh, and other activities, uh, games, uh, learning new skills like how to cook. Many you know math skills are taught in a kitchen. Those kinds of things. If if parents and families have time for that, uh, and um, and. What we are not expecting is that every parent becomes a new teacher, and I'll I'll turn that over to Nicole because there's certainly uh, things that will be able to be supported by the teaching experts. Thank you. Um, a couple of things that I think would be important to add to that conversation in the continuity of learning requirements that we released today. There are a recommended number of hours for students to work 
during the week and we are asking teachers to use this as a guideline because we know that it's not going to be the same for every family and depending on the age of your child depending on whether or not you are trying to also work from home all of these things were taken into consideration and so you'll see for example younger students we are recommending that teachers provide three to five hours of learning time to students because we know the younger students will need some support from their parents. They are not completely independent learners. In some cases, they can't read yet. <laughs> and so we know that uh, parents are fully aware of this as well. And uh, we want to take that into consideration. We also know that some parents will have more time to be able to be with their children at home. And so we want to make sure that we are supporting parents to extend learning opportunities. And so again, on our website, we've provided a number of resources for parents uh, where if you would like to go beyond those hours and you have that time, that uh, those resources are there as well. Uh, just to be clear, that's per week, <laughs> not per day. Just want to parents to have a concern out there that that's three to five hours a day for youngsters, for little ones. Uh, do you have a follow-up, Chris? Uh, yeah, yeah, and thank you uh, for cl clarifying that. Um, I, I guess the, the follow-up uh, question I have is just if you can talk a little bit more about the thought process behind uh, why this decision uh, to suspend face-to-face -face classes for the rest of the year was made today and maybe not made sooner. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Chris. The question is why was this decision made today and not sooner? Um, I think when we have the information that we need to make those decisions, then we can make them. Uh, prior to this, uh, the decision was made to suspend first face-to-face -to -face classes between the end of what was March break on the 31st of March and April the uh, 15th. That was made on the recommendation of the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Uh, you'll recall at that time that the decision was made uh, that uh, we were uncertain about the future and what uh, what the time uh, there was no cases here in the Yukon Territory and what uh, the uh, development of COVID-19 across the world would look like. Uh, the um, work was done uh, with respect to uh, teachers making plans to go forward and uh, hopefully return to classes. That has now become evident that that's not, in fact, the safe thing to do here in the territory. Uh, we have uh, consulted with and uh, taking the recommendation of the Chief Medical Officer of Health uh, in order to make this decision going forward. Uh, there were a number of factors that went into the determination of this matter at this time, uh, particularly the knowledge of, uh, of COVID-19 here in the territory and, uh, and how that is unfolding. Uh, the decisions and the orders coming from the Chief Medical Officer of Health about not being able, able to congregate with more than 10 persons, uh, the uh, ongoing uh, uncertainty for families and for teachers, and an attempt to address that so that, uh, that their work could continue without the uncertainty of this decision uh, looming, if, uh, if I can say it that way. And uh, all of those factors came together uh, at this time to make this the appropriate time for this decision uh, any sooner. I would suggest we did not have all of the information that we have uh, today as this decision is being made. Uh, and, uh, and the determination of this today is to provide that certainty to families, uh, to students, uh, to teachers, and to parents going forward uh, so that uh, the work uh, can go into making sure that each student gets to achieve their learning goals in the next number of weeks before what is what would have been the end of the school year. We'll go to Marin from the Euro Boreal. Oui, merci. Um, Est-ce que je peux poser ma question en français? No, uh, no. désolé. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've, I've got uh, two questions. My my first question is, uh, how is it going to work for the people that live out of town, the, for the children that usually take the school bus to go to school? Um, could we imagine a, a way that the packages that you talked a little bit earlier 
the homework packages could come through the school bus to the communities? I'll start with that one and then I know Nicole has some, some information about that. Uh, firstly, um, the information uh, and the work uh, will be uh, ha will have every student in the territory connected to their school. So initially, uh, the uh, appropriate work and connections will come through teachers, through educators, through uh, EAs, uh, school principals, and through the schools. The school will be the conduit uh, for getting that work to individual students. Uh, however, that might happen. But certainly, we have uh, have thought and have had some discussions about. Um, delivering things to students uh, across the territory if that becomes an issue. Yeah, I, I would just continue to say that uh, these um, ideas that you've shared are conversations that are coming forward as schools are sharing with some of their uh, challenges and what some of their uh, solutions are around how to deliver uh, to families that uh, maybe live outside of town, as you mentioned, or have a lack of uh, access to technology and need the physical delivery of materials. We, uh, of course, at this time, will will not be transporting students by, by school bus. And so we are in conversations with standard bus to assess the impacts and, and to work together to look at options where we can uh, continue our partnership together. And do you have a follow-up, Marin? Um, no, but I would have another question. Okay, go okay? ahead. Um, how is it gonna work for the parents that are essential or critical workers uh, if uh, there is uh, no one-to-one uh, -one, um, cooling and if they're like how they, they're supposed to continue working, like I'm talking about self, um, self workers, for example. Thank you for that question. That is certainly a conversation that uh, we are having all across Canada uh, in our conversations with uh, ministers of education of Canada. And we uh, certainly acknowledge that for those families, we want to be able to work with them directly to provide support where we can to hear about what some of the challenges are and to find ways that we can work together within the health measures that have been put in place. So I, I would point to again, the importance of why we are giving this time to schools to be able to have conversations with all of the members of their school community so they can find out what's going on for their families and how they can best support students. All right, have I gotten to everyone on the phone? All right, with that then we'll close. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.